Hey Pagan Perspective, it's Scissors and this week we are talking about familiars and totem animals. Um, familiars are a slightly debated topic um, from what I've seen in a few different books and in some people's videos, but um, so some people think that they're just a made-up thing and they're all angry and rah, about them, um, saying that they don't belong in um, witchcraft today and all of that. And then some people are like, hey, familiars are just a part of witchcraft, what witchcraft is. It's traditional and all this stuff. Um, whether or not they were a part of um, past witchcraft, ancient witchcraft, I can't say for sure. I don't know if anybody can because I've heard it battled both ways about whether it was made up or not. Um, the way familiars are used when they are used in witchcraft, they are generally like pets. Some people say that all of their pets are their familiars, and some people say that only certain pets are familiars. Um, it can be battled both ways, I've heard it battled both ways, and it's really a personal preference kind of thing. Um, if you feel that all of your animals are your familiars, that's cool. If you only feel that your cats are your familiars, that's cool. If you only feel like one certain animal is your familiar, that's cool. If you don't feel like you have any familiars, but you might someday, or you think it's completely stupid, that's cool. It's a completely preference-based type thing. Just looking at the word familiar, it is a spirit that is familiar to you. So you've probably met it in a past life before, you travel through through different lives, and it's usually some animal or usually an animal that you work magic with, that is present with you when you work magic um, by choice. Not like you grab your cat and sit it next to you by your altar, that would just be rude. It's an animal who will just wander up to you when you're working and will sit next to you when you're meditating, will always be in your circle, um, will want to be around your magical tools. My cats like to sleep on my Book of Shadows. Uh, they like to sleep under my altar when I don't have things under there. Um, although I think most animals are just kind of drawn to that energy. There are certain animals who, because they are a familiar spirit, they work with you. They share their energy with you and with your working and that's why they are your familiar. Yeah, so familiars, it's really a preference-based thing. It's really, there are a million different ways that you can go with familiars. Um, I honestly wouldn't classify Ellis here or Ernie, who is over there somewhere, but you can't see him. I think he's behind the couch. But I honestly wouldn't classify either of my cats as familiars per se. They do like to be around me and my altar and my working area, but I wouldn't consider them as familiar spirits who have traveled with me through all of my different lives and who help me with my working all the time. They like to be around when I'm lighting candles, and they like to sleep on my Book of Shadows, but I personally don't feel that they are a familiar spirit. Um, not that they're strangers, but I don't know. It's It's just... You get it? <laughs> I hope so, because that's the best way I can explain it. Okay, so let's move on to totem animals. Totem animals exist in tons of different cultures. I would go as far to say all of them, except that I might be wrong, and some people might yell at me. So most cultures that I have looked into their traditional spiritual beliefs have some form of totem animal-esque thing. Animals have been given different associated meaning meanings for a long, long time. I would not be able to tell you exactly when that started because I wasn't there. There are so many different ways to choose your totem animal, whether it's something that's just been following you around incessantly, or if it's something that you just love, or it's something that you find in a meditation, or it comes to you in a meditation, or in a dream. Um, but totem animals today um, are usually an animal that is there to help you and guide you. <clears throat> it's an animal that will show up at certain times to tell you certain things. Um, or to help you through something. Like, 
or maybe it's to explain a part of yourself. Each animal has a different meaning. You can use them in or in a card form, like an oracle deck. Um, you can meditate with one animal individually based on what the animal um, totem meaning is. You can have a astral form of an, a totem animal that helps you with things. I had a white fox once, like a, um, I had a white fox once that would come to me all the time and it would help me in my meditation, so it would help me find information. Um, I don't know why it was a white fox. I like snow. <laughs> but, for, so for a while, that was a totem animal that helped me. You can have a totem animal that is yours for life, and it's just your totem. Um, different cultures have different ways of using them. I would look into different traditions <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and try to find the one that works best for you. For additional information about totem animals and or familiars, please check the sidebar. I will post links to some videos about specific totem animals and such. Or if you're using the new and improved YouTube thing, where the sidebar is now down there, or if you're like on the Pagan Perspective homepage, it'll be down there, um, and you can click on the links there or there. I hope that my information has been sufficient. Um, Mucha love and blessed be.